This video is sponsored by Raycon. Face it or it's right now. See where I'm from? You either almost make it or you don't. Went to the NFL and caught a case. Almost got signed, went and caught a case. Once you're arrested, the only person that's going to determine what's going on with you is the judge. This man's name is O3 Greedo, and he comes from one of the roughest projects in Los Angeles, the Jordan Downs projects on Grape Street. But in 2017, he signed a deal with Alamo Records for $1.7 million, which really pissed him off because it was 300 racks shy of two mil. Oh, and also a year later, he'd be facing a 300 year sentence for trafficking four pounds of methamphetamine across state lines. This is the story of the Wolf of Grape Street. Many moons ago, before O3 Greedo was the wolf of Grape Street, before becoming a living legend by literally tattooing living legend across his cheeks, and yes, that is a MAC-10 tattooed on his chin, he was just a young boy growing up in the rough parts of Los Angeles. And it was here that a young Greedo would be introduced to that famous blue rag rocking set of gangsters, the Crips. Saying himself that his own father, who unfortunately passed away when Greedo was only one years old, was apparently one of the very first Crips in the city. My father was one of the first Crips, you know what I'm saying? My father ran with Turkey, so. But if you think losing your main male role model out of your life when you're only one years old is bad, just wait till you hear what else Greedo went through as a boy. In fact, this guy has probably had some of the worst luck in god dang history. Bouncing around from place to place during his formative years, he would find himself hanging out on the wrong blocks and with the wrong people. Getting addicted to cocaine as early as 13 years old, getting his girlfriend pregnant at 17 and becoming a father at 18, all the while trying to hold down a handful of legitimate jobs at various places. Weirdly, including Best Buy. I mean, just imagine 03 Greedo serving you at Best Buy. But apparently, the retail jobs just weren't quite cutting it for the Wolf of Grape Street. So eventually, he had to start selling drugs to support his young family after being kicked out of his mother's house. This actually even led him to infamously spend some time homeless on the streets of Los Angeles, a fate that I probably wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Now, of course, Greedo moved around a lot during these formative years of his life, bouncing between sleeping on the street, sleeping at girls' houses, or coughing a couch at one of his homies. But eventually, he would settle down in the Jordan Downs housing projects in Watts. Now, this is a notoriously dangerous hood. Parts of the classic LA gangbanging epic menace to society were actually filmed there, but even more impressive to me specifically, the Jordan Downs projects were actually digitally recreated in the iconic video game Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, appearing in-game as the Willow Field housing projects. Now, Jordan Downs was funnily enough also a flashpoint for the Watts riots back in the 60s, which if you want to know more about, I actually discussed extensively in my documentary on the history of rap in LA where your boy actually went to Watts. Anywho, of course, you'd have had to be literally living underneath a crack rock to have never heard about the blue rocking gangsters, the Crips, who roll deep in the streets of LA. However, the Crips on Grape Street, which runs parallel to the Jordan Downs housing projects, do things a little differently. There, they rock purple bandanas instead of blue, cause you know, grapes are purple. Well, good ones anyway. Now, the Grape Street Crips have had a historical beef with the nearby Bounty Hunter Bloods who are also from Watts, mainly based around the nearby Nickerson Gardens projects. However, more importantly to this story, the Grape Street Crips, beefs and alliances stretch far beyond the Bloods and even beyond the city of Los Angeles. For example, they were involved in a bloody gang war in 2008 when Brandon B.L. Bullard, a veteran Grape Street Crip, was gunned down by East Coast Crips in Los Angeles who had opened fire at a crowd in a party in LA. Now, he was a serious player in the Grape Street Crips and a previous shooting targeting him had also sparked a wave of shootings that left 26 wounded and 8 dead. And so within only 36 hours of that party shooting, the LAPD allegedly responded to 10 more shootings where 17 people were injured and 4 killed. So if I've learned one thing, Grape Street is not the safest place to be chilling out and munching on grapes. Anyway, as well as beefing with Crips from other states outside of Los Angeles, the Grape Street Crips also have alliances with crews outside of LA too. Because famously, there is a Memphis gang set closely affiliated with the Grape Street Crips called the Peter Roll Mafia. They're actually well known for throwing up an M gang sign for Mafia, which isn't dissimilar from this kind of reverse woo sign that you might have seen Pop Smoke throwing up back in the day. Now, the Peter Roll Mafia is actually the same crew that Memphis-based rapper Blockboy JB reps too, having shown his love for Grape Street by using his bank account to cop this hard, iced out grape chain. And as well 
well as JB, you've also got fellow young Memphis rapper NLE Chopper, who showcased his ties to the gangsters on Grape Street to the fullest with his recent banger of a single, Picture Me Grape Him, where NLE Chakra appears himself in the music video surrounded by purple things, imagining what life would have been like if he'd have been banging grape in LA too. Now this connection between Grape Street in LA and Memphis, Tennessee down in the south might explain why a lot of the residents of Grape Street aren't necessarily native Los Angelinos, with many of those people who settled there apparently coming from other cities in the American South, such as New Orleans or Memphis, Tennessee, with many current Grape Street residents repping Peter Roll proudly, as was documented in this Jordan Downs Hood vlog. Join down projects, Peter Roll Mafia. Oh, yeah. Majority of all of us from the South. We're, we're, everybody that come to Watts. But it's not just projects that are shared between the Grape Street Crips and the Peter Roll Mafia. In fact, it actually seems like these two interstate crews are known to share quite a slick joint narcotics operation too. In 2017, 22 people from both Memphis and Los Angeles were indicted as part of a three-year investigation into a huge interstate dope ring. This apparently regularly saw purple bandana Crips routinely sending large amounts of H, marijuana, methamphetamine, and cocaina across state lines and between the two cities that these gangs were operating in. Now, remember all that for later, but for now, let's get back to 03 Greedo, who became a man and found himself trapping and graping in the Jordan Downs projects, selling dope on the block and coming up the hard way. But even after he found himself a stable place to live and hustle from, the bullshit would continue and he would struggle year after year toiling in the streets trying to improve the circumstances for him and his family. And I tell you what, these years weren't kind to Greedo. He was catching gun charges and burglary charges with him eventually finding himself in the slammer serving a two year sentence, where he would spend his time writing songs and eventually come up with the idea that when he got out of jail, he would make a proper go of it in the music industry. Hopefully using his talent as a performer and songwriter to get himself out of the streets for good. So when he got out of jail, he started making music regularly, initially under the stage name Greedy Giddy. And under this name, he would drop numerous mixtapes, become a prolific SoundCloud uploader and appear in numerous hood vlogs. Now this era of Greedo's career isn't necessarily for me, but it made him what he is today, and I gotta say, the track Potheads and Strippers kind of a vibe. Now, Greedy's mixtape run started with Sign My Cast. This was followed by I Can't Sleep, the teaser tape, then four editions of a mixtape series called Bipolar, and after that was Everybody Week Volume 1 and 2, with all of those leading up to the final release of this era, Money Powder Regrets. It's a fire title, that last one. Now, Greedo wasn't really picking up much buzz with his music at this time, but what he was doing was building his confidence on the mic and experimenting with a diverse range of musical sounds and genres, slowly taking the first steps of developing into one of the most unique and unclassifiable artists that LA rap has ever spawned. But unfortunately, before Greedo had really found his lane in music, in 2016, tragedy would strike, changing the course of his music career and his life forever. And now, a word from our sponsor. Shout out Raycon for the fire earbuds. If you want to hear stuff, Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry. One earbud at a time, brilliantly. And Raycon, they make no compromise with premium wireless audio for half the price of others out there with sick designs. With so many colors and patterns, all they're so fly. They've got a 45 day free return policy. So you can cop from Raycon today, worry free. They do it different to all of the other brands. Their prices and their designs will meet your demands. When Raycon sell earbuds, they're serious. About prioritizing customer experience And the fit on my Raycons are so fire Ain't no dangling stems or tangled wires The company was co-founded by Ray J So when it comes to quality they ain't gon' play play Celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson and Rich the Kid Are all obsessed with Raycons, that's why they're so sick Join the club and get Raycon earbuds today Click the link in my description box and go to the page Buy Raycon.com slash TLR To get 15% off your Raycons, that's right yas Go click that link baby Shout out to Raycon Bow, bow, bow On 
the 28th of June, 2016, Greedy Greedo and another man were driving a 2016 Nissan through Amarillo, Texas on the I-40. Now remember at the start of this story when I said that there was a big drug line that ran from the Peter Royal Mafia in Memphis, Tennessee to the Grape Street Crips in Watts, Los Angeles? Well, that drive from Memphis back to Grape Street unfortunately cuts through the panhandle at the north of Texas. And it would appear that this night, Greedy Greedo and his friend were graping their way through Texas with bad intentions. Cops pulled them over and claimed to be able to smell cannabis from their car. And while the driver admitted to the police that they had indeed been smoking the green stuff in the vehicle, it would turn out that harmless marijuana would be the least of their problems. As cops eventually made their way through the vehicle, ultimately forcing open the trunk where they found four pounds of methamphetamine, which they claimed was worth upwards of $80,000. But realistically, that's a very conservative estimate. This four pound bag of loose meth could have easily netted the wolves in Grape Street hundreds of thousands of dollars if it was being sold hand to hand back on the streets of LA. I mean, honestly, just look at the size of that bag. O3 Greedo is probably the first person to be facing life for a bag for life. Then again, considering how many songs this guy records in a session, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to say it was personal use. I know what you're thinking. Getting caught with four pounds of loose meth in Texas, it probably can't get much worse than that. But ladies and gentlemen, it really did. Because in addition to meth, pistols and ammunition were found in the vehicle, with these guns having been reported stolen in the state of California. So all of this together did not look good for our pal Greedy Greedo. Greedo was ultimately charged with unlicensed possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and possession of over 400 grams of a controlled substance. And after spending eight days in a jail in Amarillo, Texas, Greedo was released on bond and returned to LA sans meth. Look, who knows what the repercussions in the street were for losing that four pound batch of meth. So when Greedo got out of jail, it was a wise move to make a fresh start and think of a way to somehow get his life back on track. And it was at this point that Greedo would transform himself from a grimy Grape Street narcotics trafficker to a prolific musician and artist who would make money by selling his stories of being involved in a dangerous and violent narcotics operation rather than actually participating in it. But even with that honorable strategy in mind, one question still remained. Would it already be too late for Greedo to get his redemption? In 2016, Greedy Greedo was reborn under a different name. 03 Greedo. This was apparently the merging of his nickname 03 in jail, which comes from his set of the Grape Street Crips being based in 103rd Street. Because if you didn't know, the Jordan Downs project is bounded by Grape Street on the west, 97th Street in the north, and 103rd Street from the south. So with that in mind, he also flipped the greedy part of his name to Greed O as part of another block tradition to replace the Y with an O, all as part of a strategy for him to make his stage name more unique. And under this fresh new name, he would begin to record his biggest songs and mixtapes to date. Most notably was his breakout single Mafia Business, a tribute to his fallen Grape Street homie Mafia Ray. This was an older homie who was like a mentor to Greedo growing up, and he was actually one of the first people from their hood to start supporting Greedo's music. His real name was Raymond Lee Arnold, a father of four who was tragically gunned down in a Crenshaw barbershop in July 2016. However, Ray's legacy lived on in the streets, with Ray even appearing in the music video for Mafia Business as a cardboard cutout, which sounds kind of creepy on paper or card, but honestly, when I see the music video, I just find it weirdly moving to see a live sized Ray surrounded by all of his loved ones in his hood with everyone around him just having a great time and showing how much they love him and want him back. I mean, when you watch it, it really feels like he's there and it is truly touching stuff. And this thing is a lot more than just a very unique, if slightly hard to follow song, because both the song and video for Mafia Business are an incredibly unique insight into O3 Greedo's world. That track appeared on his first mixtape under the name O3 Greedo titled Purple Summer. That was followed by a sequel, Purple Summer 2, a more melancholy project inspired by a September 2016 incident where Greedo was shot in the leg. Now this was a serious injury and that bullet hit him so bad that he nearly had to have his leg amputated. Fortunately, he managed to keep his leg along with an enormous metal plate holding the whole thing together. This injury truly put Greedo through hell. I mean, he essentially had to learn how to walk all over again. The whole leg metal from the knee to the ankle. And they wanted to amputate your fucking leg, right? Yeah, I wasn't going for that. I said, hey, baby, I got dance moves to do. You know what I'm saying? I got to go on this stage, baby. Man, they don't have to amputate my leg. I was at a cheap-ass hospital. As soon as they seen I could shit, they sent me home in a taxi. They ain't finished closing me up. That shit stinking. That shit hurting. Ugh, I man, can, I'm thinking about the smell people, right man. now. But after a long recovery, Greedo would eventually get back to the music on the 4th of July, 2017, with the new project, Money Changes Everything. And this was a project dedicated to yet another one of Greedo's fallen friends, this time Lil Money. He'd actually appeared in Greedo's 2012 Fresh Home vlog before he'd even changed his name, and Lil Money is immediately recognizable as a Grape Street tough guy, with him showing off war wounds that he had picked up in these streets. Fresh out again, <laughs> going back again, it's fucked up, but it is what it is, I'm out on bail. We're my, back. 
<laughs> money fresh out the hospital, I'm fresh out of jail. Whoa, show him, yeah, show him money. That nigga, I'm back. That nigga trail fresh, uh, out, fresh, fresh, out the, fresh out the pussy. Money fresh out the hospital, I'm fresh out the jail. On December the 2nd, 2016, Lil Money was tragically gunned down while sitting in his car on Watts. With Greedo writing the track Murder Music literally the day after he found out his friend passed. That ended up on Money Changes Everything, a project which also included the first appearance of Greedo's future banger, Never Bend. So at this point, Greedo was beginning to pick up a little buzz in the streets of Los Angeles, and so he continued grinding on new projects, eventually finishing up his next one, Purple Summer 03. However, only two days after completing that project, 03 Greedo was apprehended by Texas bounty hunters, with Greedo being extradited back to Amarillo to face charges over that meth case. Greedo's homies actually took a picture of this arrest going down, which itself ended up becoming the front cover of that Purple Summer 03 project. That's gangster. A fire cover art, sure, but the true story about 03 Greedo's extradition to Texas is much more grisly than you might think. Because after this picture was taken, Greedo was thrown into a van and driven for six long days to Texas. An excruciating ordeal, more akin to torture than transport, with Greedo spending this entire trip crammed into the back of a van with other inmates, with Greedo spending the whole trip in searing agony from his still serious leg injury, whilst him and the other inmates in the van were given no bathroom to use, and being forced to start bottling homemade lemonade if you know what I mean. And eventually, when he arrived to court, Greedo's situation would go from bad to worse. There, he would receive the news that he would definitely be facing trial in 2018, still being held on those counts of unlicensed possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and possession of over 400 grams of a controlled substance, with some suggesting that worst case scenario, O3 Greedo could be facing a whopping 300 year sentence if convicted on these charges. Those ain't football numbers, those are goddamn Spartan numbers. However, there was one piece of good news. At least Greedo would be allowed to bail out and return to LA whilst awaiting his date in court. So he was back on the streets in LA with a sentence hanging over his head so long that he might have to keep serving it in the afterlife. So with all of this on his mind, Greedo would once again have to make a transformation. But this time, it wasn't his name, but his mindset that changed. Because he probably knew that based on the evidence against him, he was shit out of luck. But with the momentum that he had built up so far in the rap game since he started rapping under the name 03 Greedo, he had an opportunity to go back to Grape Street and record so much music that he might just have a chance to keep his family financially stable for that 300 years. Do you remember Purple Summer 03 had that front cover where Greedo was being arrested by bounty hunters to be taken to Texas? Well, when he got out and dropped his follow-up project First Night Out, he picked up exactly where that one left off. Dropping this more R&B inspired project with a front cover that depicted Greedo the moment he was released and allowed to walk out of that Texas jail. This entire project was apparently all recorded the night that he got out, with it including some of the biggest bangers of his career such as Rude, an absolute classic where 03 Greedo talks about no one being there for him after he got shot in the leg that time. Greedo actually actually did a pretty harrowing breakdown of this track on Genius.com, where he explained that no one actually rode out for him after he got shot, but those same people came sniffing around when he got famous. You know what, if I got shot in the leg and you lot, TLR gang, didn't ride out for me too, I'd, I'd be a rude bastard as well. Anyway, once again, this versatile project showcased Greedo's versatility on the mic and his unique style that was developing into the stuff of legends at this point. He began to discuss this fresh new sound that he created in the media, describing it as emo music for gangbangers, and over the period between catching his case and facing facing the music, Greedo truly became one of the most unique artists that hip hop ever spawned. And sure, his music isn't for everyone, but his versatility and ability to blend different genres and styles of rapping and singing has made for some of the most unique rap music in the last decade. And so through the latter parts of 2017, Greedo would record music relentlessly, play bigger and bigger shows, and make media appearances in interviews, like this fire one from October 2017, where he appeared on No Jumper with Adam22 for his very first on-camera interview. And soon enough, Greedo's buzz in the streets would translate into buzz in the industry, with him eventually attracting the attention of Todd Moskowitz at Alamo Records, who signed Greedo to an eye-watering, grape-squashing seven-figure deal, which Greedo announced on his Instagram in December 2017, along with a reference to his fallen brother, Lil Money. But don't get it twisted, this was no Lil Money, because Greedo himself claimed that his deal was worth a whopping $1.7 million. Now you know why they call him the Wolf of Grape Street. 
Greedo wasted no time after getting to that bag, however, as he would drop his first major label project on Alamo Records in March 2018, the aptly titled Wolf of Grape Street Project, bringing Greedo's name to the forefront of rap music for the first time in his career. However, with hype comes haters, and soon Greedo would be getting more attention than he had ever gotten from rap fans ever, both positive and negative. As eventually he gets interviewed by Billboard magazine, where he makes comments about the late Tupac Shakur, which some rap fans are very upset about. He basically agreed with the Lil Xan, who not too long before before this had said that Tupac's music was boring. I mean, what Greedo specifically said was Tupac sucks, so you can kind of get why Tupac fans were annoyed. But let's not forget that Greedo is a real gangster and a real crip. And since back in the day, Tupac used to roll with Suge Knight and the LA Bloods, it's no surprise that Greedo probably does hate Tupac and considers him a whole lot. But Greedo was taking his name at industry heads outside of gang beefs too. Also dissing legendary maker of hip hop beats and boots, Timberland, who had apparently upset Greedo with comments that he made dissing homemade beat makers. Cause you know Greedo gets busy on those boards too. Greedo didn't do himself any more favours when he pulled up to Rolling Stone magazine for an interview, calling beloved 90s LA hip-hop genre G-Funk fucking garbage. But then again, if you look a little bit closer at what Greedo's trying to communicate here, it kind of makes sense. He says that just because he's from LA, everyone expects him to pull up in Dickies and a lowrider. But he's trying to drive home in these interviews that he created his own unique voice in the rap game. And in many ways, all of this shit talking only did more to establish Greedo's reputation as a straight talker who kept it more gangster than the entire rap industry. And clearly around this period, Period, Greedo was far more focused on his own artistic output than what other rappers were doing. Because despite his unique style and ability to make songs that didn't quite fit into the usual dichotomy of emotional hood ballads, Greedo was still prolific in the studio and set out over this period to record an enormous amount of music that could still be released while he was locked up in jail. A catalogue of allegedly 30 albums and over 3,000 songs of material. Kenny Beats said that he had seen Greedo record 20 songs in a day and unlike other rappers, most of them would be good. What Greedo was doing was essentially trying to keep a promise that he had made to his fans. To leave behind a legacy of 30 albums to tide them over while he served his potentially never-ending stretch in jail. But that said, Greedo wasn't just banging out these songs for the money or for the sake of it, but he told Complex that music was his release. He says that he has so much on his mind that if he can't get it out in the vocal booth, he'd be taking it out in the streets. However, with all of that creativity, only one project into the record deal of a lifetime, Greedo would soon see everything that he had worked for come crashing down in only only a matter of months, as that Texas case would come rearing its ugly head once again, with the consequences to Greedo being ultimately devastating. In January 2018, 03 Greedo was named by Billboard magazine as one of the 10 top hip hop and R&B artists to watch in 2018. Unfortunately, this went for the feds as well as the fans. After all, between being generously let out on bail and returning to Texas for his trial, he had quite literally amassed millions of dollars. By the time Greedo went back to Texas, he was a changed man. He changed his life and finally gotten the opportunity to take himself and his people out of the mud for generations. And well, the feds apparently didn't like seeing Greedo all up in Billboard like that. Greedo told Fader magazine that he only started getting big years thrown at him by the feds when they found out he was a rapper. And if you believe this, and you consider the evidence against Greedo, going to trial would have likely seen the feds try to make an example of him, pushing for that 300 year super sentence. So in April 2018, Greedo appeared in a court in Amarillo, Texas, where he pled guilty to both charges and was handed a rough 20 year sentence. After the sentence was handed down, a heartbroken Greedo was seen tweeting that he never thought he'd have to retire the year he blew up, and he later took to social media to address a few rumors specifically, denying that he'd been given a full life sentence and revealing to the fans that the one silver lining to the situation was that the feds had at least given him a few months to get his affairs in order before he would have to return to jail. Not in jail. No, I'm not in jail. I'm not lying about being in jail. The media line. I don't have life. I do have a lot of time. I ain't going to the summertime. I'm fucking with you. Let's turn up till I'm going. I'm not in fucking jail. Do you think I'm gonna just go to jail, take the deal, and then just say, take me now? No, nigga, give me some extra time. Nigga, let me go on tour. Let me let me get this money right for my key. Greedo also tweeted that day that he's got a whole bunch of music to tide over fans while he's gone. And I'm sure you can imagine that in the months between his sentence being handed down and him starting it, he must have recorded like an absolute madman. Right up to his incarceration, he was dropping music, with the last big project that he was actually here to deliver in person being the God Level project that was released in June 2018. At the time, Greedo described this album as his best work. I mean, you'd have to, you are literally saying you are on the same level as God. And I tell you what, God never dropped a trash song in his life. I mean, sure, that New Testament didn't bang like his old mixtape, but anyway. Also, in a move that's so ironic, it literally hurts my bones. After trashing Tupac in numerous interviews, Greedo basically stole the whole cover art for this project from Tupac's Seven Day Theory. Maybe that was just one last big fuck you to Tupac, I don't know. Anywho, 
who regardless, Greedo grinded his music right up until the bitter end. This included playing his final farewell show at LA's Belasco Theatre, the Farewell to a Real One show, a night that I'm sure nobody in the audience or Greedo would ever forget. So if I go through 20 years, you feel me? Man, I got two options in a few days, man. I can turn myself in out the run for my life! I mean, the show was just crazy. There was an incredible performance from Greedo, along with some insanely hilarious moments. Big girls were trying to knuckle up in the crowd. Greedo got a drunk fan up to dance on stage, one who was ironically wearing a goddamn Tupac shirt. He got a Tupac shirt! <laughs> And girls were even trying to flash their titties for Greedy. But Greedo wasn't trying to see those titties, because in a surprise move near the end of the show, Greedo got down on one knee and actually proposed for his girlfriend on stage, with her agreeing to be his wife only two days before he was set to go and serve that 20 year sentence. <laughs> Now that's a real one. But even off the stage, Greedo was in the studio right up until the very moment of his sentence. With his last outing in the studio being an iconic session where Greedo met up with Smoke Perp, Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Pump, and Desto Dub, recording some of his very last pieces of music before he was set to go away for 20 years. And it was this session that spawned tracks like Bank Teller and the big Lil Uzi Vert remix of Never Bend. However, naturally, at some point, the party would have to come to a close. So on July 28th, 2018, after his final show, his final session, and his final taste of the stardom that he had spent years to build, Greedo surrendered himself to authorities to begin serving his 20 year sentence. The sentence that he's still serving to this day. Greedo's currently being held in the Caulfield Unit Prison in Texas. He told Complex in a jailhouse interview that being in Texas was at least a small positive because there he wouldn't have to face the kind of gang politics that he would be facing had he been in a jail back in his native California. But still, 20 years in prison for a non-violent offense is a hard pill to swallow, no matter what state you gotta do it in. Worst case scenario, 03 Greedo won't be released until 2038. His projected release date is currently 2027. And although he did become eligible for parole in 2020, he was unfortunately not granted it. This means his next hearing won't be until June 2021, and who knows what the outcome of that will be. But since Greedo went to prison, he has indeed made good on that promise to keep dropping music from prison for his fans to enjoy as if he was still here. One of the most notable music videos filmed since Greedo went away was the March 2019 track Trap House with Shoreline Mafia, produced by DJ Mustard. This is one of my favorite Greedo bangers, and it came with a music video that brings this story full circle. Because in it, 03 Greedo appears not in person, but as a cardboard cutout, just like Mafia Ray had done in Greedo's first breakout song, Mafia Business. And thankfully, there have been numerous full-length projects for the dedicated Greedo fans to sink their teeth into whilst he's serving his sentence. In April 2019, he dropped the project Still Summer and the Projects, produced by DJ Mustard. In July 2019, he had the Meet the Drummers EP with Travis Barker. And in September 2019, he dropped the fire concept album Netflix and Deal with Kenny Beats, with each track being incredibly cinematic and based on a different film that 03 Greedo has been obsessed with in his life. The track Disco Shit, in my opinion, is absolute flames. And I've got to say that Kenny's documentary about the making of this project is some Netflix grade shit that you can find on YouTube right now. So shout out Kenny Beats for that and definitely go and give that a watch slash listen. In fact, that project was actually named as one of the top albums of the year in 2019 by Complex, which is cool, but kind of a bittersweet victory when you consider the fact that the genius of Greedo is still rotting away in a prison cell. Since his incarceration, information has surfaced, suggesting that since the COVID pandemic hit, prisoners at the facility that Greedo is being held at have had some of their rights taken away. And in January, 2021, Greedo himself ended up catching COVID, fortunately surviving, but I'm guessing he went through hell having to deal with that in jail. But don't get it twisted. O3 Greedo is using his time well in jail. He's doing his thing. He's reading, he's studying, hell, he even got his GED. And no doubt he's probably writing about 100 songs every single God dang day. And Greedo has even been communicating with the outside world on social media too. At one point, even coming out to say in a message that was reposted on his social media that there are a few bad grapes out there profiting off of his pain and selling free O3 shirts, but without sending him the money or even writing to him. You know what? I can't imagine how tough it must be to go from being a prolific artist, being beloved by your people, to serving a 20 year jail sentence and feeling completely forgotten. If I ended up having to go to jail for 20 years and I found out people were making money from me or talking behind my back without even writing me a courtesy letter, I would be pissed too. So you know what? Let's change that. 
Guys, I'm gonna write 03 Greedo a letter in jail. Having spent the last couple of weeks researching this story, engrossing myself in Greedo's personality, his incredible body of work, and just him as, a, as a, one of the craziest characters I've ever, ever seen in hip hop, it just seems wrong not to write him a letter and show him the respect that he deserves, the living legend that we know he is. Hey, and maybe you already were a big Greedo fan. All through this story, you've gotten into his music for the first time and you wanna show him some love too. I suggest maybe you write him a letter as well. So I'm gonna go through the whole process, show you how you can get in touch with Greedo and finish this video off by showing him some love directly. So let's write to Greedo. So here's the message that Greedo put out when he was saying he was annoyed at people kind of using his name, his likeness, his logo and all this stuff to, to get promotion, sell 03 Greedo shirts, but people weren't showing him love and they weren't sending him letters. So what this says is that if you're gonna make money off him, and not put money on his books, you're taking advantage of him. So people say they're gonna J-pay him money, which I guess is the system for sending money to people that are jailed where Greedo is. I'm gonna check out J-pay first and just see if I can send Greedo some money easy without actually going down to the post office. First, find your incarcerated individual. Let's see if we can find Greedo. Texas, inmate ID, I guess that is this. Here he is, Jason Jamal Jackson, 03 Greedo. So we found him on J-pay. So can I just send him money? How much would I like to send Greedo? <laughs> I feel mad on the spot here. I've never sent anyone money in jail before. I don't know how much one should send Greedo. All I know is that he comes from 103rd in Grape Street. So I'm gonna send him 103 bucks. Let's see if that works. Cool. So this is all I gotta do. I just gotta put in my info. All my personal info getting leaked. Just writing Greedo a letter, fucking hell. Greedo's gonna have my info. I'm scared. Hope they don't send man my billing address. I'd, I'd be upset if they send if they send Greedo my billing address. I get this 103rd in my boy Greedo's account, man. My guy needs to be copping all the ramen, baby. Oh, you gotta be on the approved list to send money. You gotta contact the offender. All right, I can't send Greedo the money I wanted to send him. If I can somehow get on the approved list for him in the future, I will send him the money. Okay, to write a letter, you gotta buy stamps. The boy gotta cop stamps out here. How much are these gonna set me back? Am I gonna get, am I gonna get stamped? My bank account's about to get stamped. 245, five letters, my, my guy. I'm gonna write five letters and let's see where that goes. Right. I got stamps now, baby. I got stamps. I can I can hit Greedo. Compose. Have I got There he is. I'm nervous. I feel like I'm talking with Greedo directly now. This is crazy. Okay. I'll level with you guys. I've never written a prison letter before, so I don't know what the etiquette is. I don't know what the vibes are supposed to be like. Hope this isn't mad offensive or like what people don't do, but anyway. Dear O3 Greedo. My name is Traplor Ross and I'm a YouTube creator from the UK. And I make videos about the most important people and moments in hip hop history. My homie Drew is sharing, put me onto your music a while back. And after learning about your story, I knew it was only right that I got in touch and showed some love. After spending the last couple of weeks doing nothing but listening to your music, watching your interviews and being in your world, I can tell you are truly a living legend. It truly breaks my heart and the hearts of any Greedo fan to know that the man that brought so much creativity and joy into so many lives is stuck in a cell, unable to communicate with the world. But if I learned anything from your story, it's also that you're one of the realest, strongest guys to ever do it. So no doubt, even after this long stretch, I can imagine you've still got your head held high and are bringing joy to whoever you encounter there. I can't imagine how difficult it was for you to go back to Texas and face your sentence. Having watched everything you did up until that point, the farewell to a real one show, hearing about your final session with Pump, Uzi and Desto, I can't help but feel that it must have taken a hell of a lot of courage to be a man and face the music at that point. I know how much pain you had to go through to get to the the pinnacle of your career. You've endured more hardships than I can imagine. Losing Mafia Ray and Lil Money, getting shot in the shin, surviving all of that just to get screwed on this case. You're a true inspiration to have gotten through so much hardship in your time and still being able to channel that pain into beautiful music that has a positive effect on people's lives. When they took you away after all you achieved, it felt like a true tragedy. But just know that this difficult time will pass and all of your fans and supporters are out here rooting for you, counting down the days until you're free, bumping your music as loud as it will go and sharing your songs with anyone that will listen. I'm hoping that you're able to get paroled this year. Everyone is praying for you. And as soon as you touch down, there is no doubt that you will be one of the biggest artists in music and an inspiration to anyone that had to go through it. Thanks again for all of the dope music. Thanks for showing people it's okay to be yourself and create new things. And if there's any message, wisdom, or updates you wish to share with fans, please get in touch with me or have your management do so. And I will be sure to make sure your voice is heard. All the best, Trap Lord Ross. Hey, look, I've never written a prison letter before. I don't know if this is cool. I don't know if this is what he's gonna wanna hear. I just wanna make sure that he knows that we appreciate him, that we're thinking about him, and that we're excited for him to get out. So I'm gonna send this off with my, one of my stamps. So I think if I hit preview, it will show it to me like he's gonna see it. No way! So this is how he's gonna see it. So you've received a JPay letter, fastest way to get mail. Oh, I'ma send it, I'ma send it. This is crazy, this is kind of exciting. I've never done this before. This feels a bit crazy, but let's do it. Dope. 
It's been sent. I've got a confirmation number. If he gets back to me, I'll, I'll say to him, let's set it up so that I can send him some money. I've got to send him 103 bucks. I feel like it's only right. I want to send him some cash. But anyway, that's the first time I've ever sent a prison letter. That was actually pretty exciting. I just wanted to show Greedo that love and that respect. Obviously, we ended this story by him saying that he didn't feel like people were really showing him that love and respect that he deserves in jail. I feel like this was an opportunity to change that. So if you've enjoyed today's story, if you've enjoyed Greedo's music and he's had an impact on you, I would definitely suggest you follow the steps that I went through in this video. Send Greedo a letter. Show him some love and appreciation for being such a legend in this scene. This was quite a big video to put together for me. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. I want to give an enormous shout out to my homie, Drewy Sharing, who I mentioned in the letter, but he deserves another big shout out because he is the biggest Greedo fan going. And he was just on my case nonstop to get this video put together. And I'm so glad that he was because this turned out to be just one of my favorite vids that I've ever done. Also want to give a massive shout out to my patron, 303 Greedo 5021. I know that you have been a patron for the longest time and obviously you've wanted me to do a Greedo story for hella long. And now I've got around to it. I hope you enjoyed that. We've got to try and free Greedo. Hopefully Greedo's free soon. Hopefully he gets back to me. If he does write back to me, I'll give you guys an update over on my second channel, Trap More Ross. So if you want to check that out, head on over to Trap More Ross and subscribe there. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting Trap Law Gang. You are the best. Until next time, peace out. We woke up intoxicated off of all type of drugs. I'm never sober when I'm not in love. I need some type of drugs. I need some type of substance. She keeps sending me so. That is some type of substance. She keeps sending me stuff. I need some type of drugs. We woke up intoxicated off of all type of drugs. All right, one more, and um, then I'm done. We woke up intoxicated off of all type of drugs. No, intoxicated off of all type of drugs. Coco, intoxicated off of all type of drugs. I'm never sober when I'm in love. I need some type of drugs. 303, man. 303. Peace.